Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight for our 18 News Digital Exclusive State of the Virus. I'm George Stockberger. Now we have our third COVID-19 vaccine and cases continue to drop across the country. So where do we stand one year later? And today we're joined by Dr. Justin Nistico of Arnett Health. Thank you for joining us today, doctor. Thank you for having me. All right, so Dr. Nistico, uh, this week, Chemung and Schuyler counties reporting single digit cases of a virus. Steuben County has seen major improvements after being the region's epicenter last year. So where do we stand right now when it comes to the spread of COVID-19? We're starting to see the reduction in community acquired spread with the virus due to the rollout of the new vaccines and the vaccines that we've had. A lot of cases that we've seen in both the hospital and outside in the community, the numbers of questions and concerns about having active infection have declined. We've seen the numbers of active cases declining and the rates of hospitalizations and deaths from COVID-19 have also been declining in our region, which is excellent. Um, and that really is a testament to both patients doing appropriate social distancing, wearing masks, and also uh, people getting vaccinated, which has been great. All right, so right now we have these three vaccines and after a slow start, we're starting to see these mass vaccination sites and the counties are now administering doses. And also on Tuesday, the governor expanded eligibility for anyone who's over 60 to get the vaccine. So what's kind of the current state of a vaccine rollout now in our area? Uh, it's been very successful. A lot of uh, places that have been vaccinating include uh, local pharmacies, uh, big company pharmacies, also uh, hospitals and different types of clinical sites that we have in the area have rolled out the vaccine. Uh, what's great about it is that there is uh, scheduling performed that's through online uh, services where people can register to get scheduled for the vaccine series and uh, the individual will arrive either at a pharmacy or a location like a hospital or clinic. They'll receive their first dose if they're getting the mRNA vaccine and then come back at the designated time for their second dose. It's a very well-oiled machine right now and uh, individuals uh, seem to be doing well with how we're uh, giving the vaccine out. So of course we talked about before, but Johnson & Johnson vaccine is just about one shot so is that the major difference between the first two that came out before and are the side effects going to be any different for people that do get the Johnson and Johnson versus a Pfizer or a Moderna vaccine? So the Pfizer vaccination is a different type of vaccination that's through um, a called a vector virus uh, administration route. So they use a very weakened form of the virus that contains like almost the blueprint for what they call a spike protein, which is found in the COVID-19 virus. The mRNA viruses, uh, mRNA vaccines, uh, rather, is the uh, the difference is that it's non. There is no virus at all inside of those vaccines. They are two shots versus the one shot, which is Johnson and Johnson. But side effect profile is still to be determined for Johnson and Johnson per the CDC's gathering of data. Really, what they've only seen has been um, some arm soreness. Uh, they have seen some fever, chills, and some achiness. Uh, but, um, you know, in terms of side effect profile, it seems to be uh, slightly better, but also we've had less time with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Also with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, what's important to know is that it's the goal of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is not to prevent COVID-19, even though it can do that. It's it's to prevent severe cases of COVID-19 that require hospitalization and also to prevent death, which it has done significantly well, uh, especially after four weeks of receiving it. So once you get the shot and four weeks go by, you're at that maximum potential to be protected against hospitalization from a COVID-19 infection and death. All right, Doctor, we're gonna go to our first viewer question here about the Johnson & Johnson shot. Barbara in Wellsburg is asking, can you get blood clots from these shots? And again, there's been a lot of rumors about these vaccines. So is it true that you could develop blood clots from a Johnson & Johnson vaccine? There is not enough data really to showcase that you can get blood clots from vaccination. There, um, the concern really isn't so much that you'll have blood clots. It's just the concern of uh, protection. And in some individuals that are receiving the vaccine, if you're immunocompromised, uh, they still have to gather further data on Johnson Johnson, being that you are using a weakened virus, which means that that's how the shot is being administered. 
But it's not to say that you would get blood clots. There's not enough data really out there to support, um, you know, saying that, you know, individuals are having higher rates of blood clots at this time. All right. And then another viewer question, Darlene in Prattsburg asking, what brand shot is best if you have any kind of underlying conditions? So if you have underlying health conditions, uh, obviously any vaccination is better than being unvaccinated, given that it would give you protection against a severe case of COVID-19 or uh, a complication of COVID-19. Now, if you're going to look at the shots, you could discuss it with your medical provider to kind of see the benefits of both getting either an mRNA vaccination or getting something like the Johnson & Johnson vector virus vaccination, the differences really come down to some of the nuances, meaning that do you want to get two shots versus one shot, and also the efficacy of preventing actual infection, which means the mRNA tends to have a better job at preventing COVID-19 infection, but the Johnson & Johnson has done a really good job at preventing uh, you know, hospitalizations and death based upon the data. All right, now, Dr. This week, the CDC released new guidance for gatherings once people do get vaccinated. So what does this mean for people in our community now talking about being able to take off masks and be able to gather indoors? So uh, what's important about this is that if you have a small gathering of individuals that have all been vaccinated, the goal really comes down to um, having individuals now in an area where spread of the virus could be minimized. So uh, that means that if you are indoors with friends or people that are gathering in small groups, not in medium or large size groups, you can actually be together indoors without masks. And reasoning behind that is because now that we've had individuals that are in a room that all have gotten vaccinated, they've achieved what is kind of a herd immunity where individuals that are vaccinated should have less likelihood of getting COVID-19 infection. And the individuals who are in that same room with you who've gotten also vaccinated would have a less likelihood of, of spreading or contracting the COVID-19 virus, which has been a really good step forward in returning to normalcy. And so doctor, of course, a lot has changed in this last year and we've all adjusted to kind of this new normal. What are some of the things that we've learned in this last year, whether it be uh, more hand washing or the way we work with other people that you think will be kind of carried on into a new phase of reality for people? I think the strongest and most important thing about how, uh, you know, individuals uh, we've taken this pandemic with COVID-19 is that individuals are more cognizant of their own health, meaning that we're more cognizant of being cautious and, and sanitary and either wiping down certain surfaces, washing our hands more thoroughly and being cognizant of how long we should be washing them for. And also what's really important is knowing that being uh, the flu season has been much reduced given the fact that we've worn masks maybe carrying forward, it might be more beneficial for individuals who have uh, lung disease or heart disease that they might consider wearing masks uh, during flu season because that might help to prevent, uh, you know, flu from spreading. So that's definitely been a plus with this is that the flu season has been reduced. And that's actually my next question we talked about before the flu cases are down this year as well as flu deaths. So is this something we're going to see just in the future during flu season? Is everyone just wearing a mask because it's been so normalized? I think that's definitely uh, a possibility. I feel that most people that uh, would you know, have, like say if they got influenza, they could have a very severe case of it. Uh, we've seen much reduced cases. And to be honest with you, it has removed the stigma of wearing masks where people would question, is that considered uh, safe, normal, or, you know, being almost fearful of wearing the mask. Now that we wear masks, uh, you know, routinely in, in society, I think in the future, if even if the mask regulations have been lifted, if someone were to wear a mask because of concern for, you know, their own health and worry about flu, I think it's going to be less likely viewed as a concern, uh, more so than just as a safety precaution for that person. All right, finally, Doctor, we've we've talked a lot in these last four or five months while, film, while filming State of the Virus about what we need people to know, uh, whether it was about stopping the spread of the virus or now getting the vaccine. I mean, at this point in the pandemic, what do we really need people to know? 
The most important thing that individuals should know is that um, our return to normalcy uh, with this COVID-19 pandemic is is almost uh, it's 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 getting there. I think uh, what we really need to do in society is that we should uh, be mindful and open minded about receiving uh, COVID-19 vaccination to help others as well as help ourselves kind of get past this pandemic as well as continuing to perform social distancing and mask wearing for now when we're in public spaces, uh, because we're still uh, in the fight of, with COVID-19. But we could see with our efforts and we could see with the importance of, of how you know, the vaccine seems to be working and you know, the warmer weather that we're starting to see outside, we're starting to get past some of the, I guess, the uh, the doldrums or the the down points of the pandemic, mm -hmm. and we're starting to see some benefit and some light at the end of the tunnel. All right, that's great to hear. Dr. Nisco, thank you so much for joining us today. And viewers, if you have a question about COVID-19 or the vaccine that you would like one of our local experts to answer, email us at news at wetmtv.com. Thank you for joining us and have a good night.